where uh, the patient came and saying, I think there's something in my ear. And I had had about three, four cases where nothing turned out. So I was very, very calm. This is at three in the morning. And uh, I looked at the ear and there was a live cockroach in there and it was moving. Hi guys, and today we have a very special guest, Dr. Rakshita, an ENT specialist recently passed out from MVJ Medical College and Hospital, Bangalore. Thank you for joining. Hi Shivam, thank you for having me. And today we will talk about the experiences while pursuing MS in ENT. So firstly, like how is the life at college different while pursuing PG with ENT speciality than it was while pursuing MBBS? Wow, okay. Um, MBBS life is so carefree. I think it's, it's exactly like any other undergraduate life. You don't have a responsibility other than yourself and to study and to kind of ace uh, what you're working at. But once you're a resident, you are a practitioner. So what that means is starting from uh, sort of uh, looking at the patient, uh, diagnosing them, treating them, uh, taking the responsibility of working up a case, uh, operating, doing the surgeries, making sure your senior surgeon's lives are so much easier. The whole process, it's, it's paradigm shifting if I could say. And how much clinical exposure do you get during the first year and how it increases year wise? Um, uh, first year, of course, I think you're a lot more timid. I think you're still uh, sort of trying to figure out how, uh, you know, basic OPD things work. As far as surgeries are concerned, usually you're handled with all the local cases. You're handled with the uh, basic tonsillectomies, tympanoplasties. So it's, it's a slow learning curve in the first year. But once you get to your hang of all of these basic things, uh, things just start spiraling upwards and how you know you learn how to handle endoscopes you learn how to do your microscopic surgeries your laryngoscopies and uh, so on and so forth it's just it just starts going upwards and more exciting and and easier i think as a resident okay and how is the life as a pg student with ent speciality as in comparison to the students of the different branches of ms um as far as I think comparing medical and surgical fields would be like apples and oranges. But as far as uh, comparing between uh, other surgical specialties like uh, general surgery, OBG or probably ophthalmology, I think they all stand at par. Uh, and uh, students who think uh, sort of uh, the load in ENT as a, as a surgeon, uh, as a resident surgeon is lesser, I think <laughs> that's very, very untrue. And those people who kind of take up the field thinking it's a minor subject and you know, there won't be a lot of uh, work per se and stuff. Not true, my friend. I think uh, once you get into residency, you realize the workload and the pressure and everything that a resident goes through in any other major specialty is pretty much the same as someone who goes through specialties like um, ENT. So, yeah. Okay. And any particular experience like which you would love to share about your postgraduate years? Um, there's just, there's so many, Shivam. I think uh, the most rewarding experience definitely is foreign body uh, as a first year PG. Because uh, that's the time that you're on call and it's in the, it's in the night. And uh, those are the predominant cases that the first years are supposed to handle. So I had a case where uh, the patient came and saying, I'm, I think there's something in my ear. And I had had about three, four cases where nothing turned out. So I was very, very calm. This is at three in the morning. And uh, I looked at the ear and there was a live cockroach in there and it was moving. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> of course, it was, it was so, I mean, you read about it and all that, but handling it alone at three in the morning, it's definitely an exhilarating experience. And uh, yeah, I just uh, applied what uh, I knew from my OPD. I consulted my senior. And uh, after putting the peroxide and everything, when I took the foreign body out, that experience was just definitely something else. You, you really feel like it's so rewarding, so rewarding. The patient just hugged me and I don't think I'll ever forget that experience. My very first foreign body removal. Yeah. Okay. That was something to share. And the next question would be that uh, are the toppers best at practice treatment? Like... Are they the best? Um, I wouldn't, I mean, uh, see there's this whole thing where uh, everybody is like in a rat race when it comes to just stepping out of 12th into MBBS and then stepping out of NEET into residency. So people tend to carry that for three years when they're working. And I think 
at the end of it whether you top or whether you don't uh, what is important is to give up that cut throat competition kind of a mindset and focus on the fact of how much justice you do to the patients who come to you how well you use your skills so of course someone who knows a lot of theory who is able to apply the theory that they know and not just apply but apply at the right time when it is required i think they would do really well with their diagnosis and treatment in the patients but to say that every topper is always going to be always good in their diagnosis and treatment i don't think that's a fair uh, sort of conclusion uh, it's more of the clinical skill that counts so i think we should kind of start uh, looking away from the the force of the academic pressure that all all residents tend to feel and kind of really focus on how much justice you're doing to the subject to your patients and to your uh, practice and skill so in short no <laughs> and do the students drop out if they cannot keep up with the branch um okay this is kind of the thing that i tell a lot of my interns it's very 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 important to uh, really know which subject you want to work with which subject you want to end up in um and uh, i tell my interns always take the time to work in the branch and to take that extra time to do at least 6 months of observership because this is what we're trying to avoid Uh, the whole joining a branch burning out or uh, joining a branch realizing it's not your calling and then dropping out it's a very psychologically and uh, sort of career timeline wise uh, traumatic experience and kind of difficult to get out of do people do it yes i do know of my own friends who took up a specialty and then decided that it wasn't their calling and kind of stepped back uh, which is good uh, if it is recognized early definitely it's a good idea if you feel that it's not giving you what you want or if the pressure is just too much i think it makes sense to switch the subject as early as you can no judgments um but uh, definitely take all precautionary measures to not become a fish in the sea and just go over neat go over choosing the best residency according to your rank and just get into whatever specialty you get and then burn out please i i just hope that our listeners don't do that and uh, uh, but if you do burn out then uh, yes dropping out is an option you can always uh, do the exams again and uh, take up the specialty that you feel will sort of reward you for the rest of your life so yeah okay and after dropping out like uh, would they be allowed to give the neat pg or next in the upcoming years just the following year um so uh, just to put out all the cards on the plate i think uh, if you drop out of a branch once you've joined residency there's a certain cut off date usually it's about the first 15 days or so in most of the institutes during that time if you're if you're leaving then you get some part of your fees back uh, but if you don't especially in a private college usually the management will expect you to pay for the entire year and sometimes even the entire 3 years at once uh because you have submitted your original documents so it becomes a little bit of a dicey situation of course you can still kind of get your way out of it uh but uh, yes as far as neat is concerned you can give as many attempts as you want so i've had friends who have taken up specialties which they could or couldn't for whatever their uh, financial reasons uh, continued their residency for a couple months continued preparing for neat uh, on the side and then uh, cleared the subsequent neat attempt So there's really nothing much to it. In fact, in NEET, uh, if I'm not wrong, if two people have the same score, uh, the number of attempts also becomes one of the reasons why someone can score more or have a better rank than someone else who has lesser number of attempts in the exam. So it's always an option. Okay. And lastly, like one last question would be that: What do you enjoy the most about being an ENT specialist? <laughs> everything i mean i i was so inclined to ent from the time that i was exposed to it in mbbs i always went out of my way to talk to my ent professors to teach me things that weren't really too much of an integral part of mbbs just because it interested me uh, shivam i think uh, the subject was always my calling so um something i think the kick of doing your surgery is well uh um, seeing good results in your patients when they come back or something as small as seeing your foreign body patients become happy or your 
keloid patients become happy with your results i think that just gives so much pleasure this just so much happiness so uh, it's a very rewarding uh, branch overall at least for me okay good to see you this way and i'll end this conversation here it was a wonderful session and thank you dr akshita thank you shivam thank you so much